Okay, now that we have the beginnings of our Flash movie complete, we've got a centered background on top of an image uh, on an HTML page. This is our Flash movie in the center. What we want to do is we want to take it from here where there's nothing on the, the Flash movie yet, right? The Flash movie is contained inside this orange outline right here on the page. And what we want to do is we want to move it from here. We want to move it to something like this. And right here you can see this um, flash site has all the menus in place. And so I'm going to show you how to get your menus in place. It's got a number of um, uh, buttons that will all take us to different areas on the site with different download capabilities. It's got video. It's got an image gallery. It's got all kinds of stuff. And so we want to walk through that process. If we look at our flash file for our website, all we have right now is just the background layer in place and then I have this orange outline on a separate layer. It's an uh, orange stroke, uh, basically an orange line on another layer. So if we, com we can compare the new site with the site I just did right here and we can kind of build it up from the ground up. For this almost finished site you can see here this is my timeline and these are my layers and we can take a look at it piece by piece. Um, first of all, I'm going to scrub by grabbing this playhead up at the top and show you that this website, what happens is it starts out like this and then the interface kind of animates in, logo animates over, and then the playhead stops right here and then this becomes the home page of the website, right? And so we can kind of break it down piece by piece and, and build up our new site like that. So if I take these, if I click here, eyeballs are all on, eyeballs on, eyeballs off, and what I can do is show you piece by piece. So on layer one, what I've got is a background photo, right? Background photo. So then I can lock that layer. So on my new site, if I go over here, you'll see that also, turn this, these off. If I turn the eyeball on, I've got my background photo in place right on this background layer. So what I can do is I can name this and I'll call it BG-photo. And so now I just you can name a layer by just kind of clicking twice on the name part and you'll get a um, you'll be able to rename your layer. All right, and then I'm going to basically lock this in place. All right, that looks good. Double click on it. Just notice the X and Y axis are at zero. I've got my property window here. If I select this, you can see bitmap. All right, that looks good. So I will lock that into place, and we now we've got the background image. Now the next thing that we can see on the other site, on the next layer, I've got a transparency kind of overlay that kind of dulls or makes the um, the image a little transparent. Well, that's that's useful because um, eventually what we're going to want to do is put text on here, and we don't just want an image. We want text, and we want um, uh, we want to communicate with words and other types of images. So I've got a transparent overlay on the next layer. And I've named it transparent overlay. So what we could do is we could do that with our site here. And I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to turn the eyeball back on here. And this is this orange outline. I'll double click on the orange outline and I will delete it. I'll rename the layer trans transparent overlay and if this works for your site great if it doesn't then you'll skip it and you'll put something else there that and that'll be fine okay so here goes let's draw it out let's get our rectangle tool here let's take our stroke from orange to nothing so we've got no stroke but we do want a color here we could go with uh, black and go for a darker image here or we could go for uh, white and go for a wider image maybe I'll darken it instead of making lighting it and make a transparent overlay of white I'll do a transparent overlay of a dark gray or something like that so I could get a black color here right and I got my rectangle tool and you could do black or white here um, and I'll just draw a square okay so I've got a black square now on this new layer up here. If you don't have a new layer, you might have to click the new layer icon here. Just click this button, you can get new layers, right? And then you click the trash can and you get rid of layers. So new layers, get rid of layers. This is for folders, and I'm not using any folders right now. So just new layer, 
drew a rectangle on it. If I select it, you can tell it's on this new layer, right? This this is gets highlighted, so I know it's on this new layer, right? And one thing that I want to do is I want to match it to the size of my of my website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this gray background, look in my property window. It tells me my the size of my movie is 1024 by 768, right? And but the size of my background image is let's see here I'll unlock that the size of my background image is 1024 by 840 so I could either change my flash movie to match this background or not I think I will so I'll click on this gray background and I'll click edit and I'll change from 1024 by 768 I'll change it to 1024 by 840 so I'll do that so it's gonna be a little bit longer and that'll allow my my web page to people will have to scroll down to see all of the text but I, that's okay I don't I don't mind and I'm gonna click OK now we don't notice any difference at all um, I've got my window here by the way also set to um, fit in window right so we can see the entire thing we don't notice any difference because when you expand or contract your the size of your flash movie it grows uh, and it grows down and it grows to the right so the extra area that we just added on was added at the bottom and now it perfectly matches the background image the background image is 1024 by 840 and if we click on this gray area you see that our our flash movie is also 1024 by 840 if you don't believe me you can just kind of drag that over and you can see there it is there's the background of the flash movie and there's the image I'll hit control Z to undo now what I want to do is match that with this black square so I'll change the width to 1024 in the property window hit enter the height to 840 hit enter on your keyboard that makes it the correct size and then select it and change the X and Y axis to 0 and zero and then hit enter and you'll see that it tucks itself in nicely now all we see is black but we actually have black on the top layer and then underneath we have an image and then underneath the image is the the bottom of the movie which is the flash background and that's also black hopefully that's making some sense I'm gonna lock the background layer turn this on select it right this transparent overlay and I'm gonna change the alpha of this image and to do that I'm going to select it click in the color chip window go over to alpha and change it to let's say let's say uh, 67 percent and now you can see that it's still there but it's transparent and it's allowing the image to show through so now if I hit control enter on my keyboard to publish a movie right and then I go to my website and the website uh, I'm sorry if I go to my website in my folder I just published a new website.swift file and then here's the HTML file that holds that website.swift file or, or displays it embeds it so if I look at this HTML file right there it is you can see there's the darkened image right here in the center and then you can see that um, the background uh, next to it now somehow we have it has it's not matched up anymore and there's a problem there so uh, why is this blackness here why is it no longer fitting uh, that kind of question so we have to we have to look at that what happened there that's kind of interesting I wasn't expecting that to happen all right if I grab this and I click on the background 1024 by 840 and I look at this might have to adjust my look why is it having that why are we seeing that black outline we're gonna have to troubleshoot that that is kinda strange 